Probability has a wide variety of applications in real life. It is used in weather prediction, computer games, and even in letter prediction in the smartphones. This is a very interesting topic. Let's get into it. Probability, the chance of happening of an event. Now, if we represent this in mathematical terms, we can write probability as favorable outcomes by total outcomes. What we mean by this is, for example, let's say we are tossing a coin. And if I ask you to calculate the probability of getting a head, then we can think about it as, think of the denominator, that is total outcomes. When we toss the coin, there are two possible outcomes, either it could be head or it could be a tail. So, total outcomes are two. In that, they are saying it has to be head. So, how many heads are there? Just one possibility. Therefore, it is 1 by 2. Let me give another example. Suppose we are rolling a die. Then what is the probability of getting a even number? Now, for a die, it is 6 possible outcomes. Either it could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Any of these can appear on the die. Therefore, the total outcomes are 6. Now, in that they are saying us to calculate even numbers. So, 2 is even, 4 and 6. So, 3 possible outcomes. These 3 will be the favorable outcomes. Therefore, the probability is 1 by 2. So, this is a very basic outline of what probability is and how do we calculate it. So, now, let us look into what are the different type of questions which come in the exams. The first type is problems on balls or marbles. Generally, they will give you a bag with different kind of balls. We pick few balls and they will ask you what is the probability of getting a specific color or a specific number of balls. That is a type 1. The second one is problems on rolling a die. So, when we roll a die once or twice, they will ask you what is the probability of getting 2 on the die or maybe even numbers or some of the numbers to be some x value, something of that sort. And the third category is problems on playing cards. So, a deck of cards is kept and suppose we are drawing a king or maybe a spade, they will ask you what is the probability of getting that spade or the king. That sort of questions fall into category 3. Okay, now let us solve questions on category 1, that is problems on balls and the marbles. Now, for this, some basic concepts of permutation and combinations are important, specifically the combination concepts. So, if you are not thorough with the concepts, please go back, watch permutation and combination and come back and solve this. And for your information, let me give you some basic concepts which are necessary for the questions we are going to solve. Suppose we have some objects, some A, B, C, D, E and so on and objects are there. And if the question says, the number of ways to select R objects from N objects is, then we use the formula for combination as NCR, which is N factorial by R factorial into N minus R factorial. Let us take an example to understand this. Suppose we have letters like P, Q, R, S and T. So, the number of letters is 5 and suppose we pick up 3 letters at random, then what is the number of combinations or the selections possible? For this, we can use the formula selections or the combinations is NCR which is 5C3 that is 5 factorial by 3 factorial into 2 factorial. 5 factorial is 120, 3, is, 3 factorial is 6 and 2 factorial is 2 this is 10. That is how we calculate the number of selections from a set of objects. Now, this concept is required to solve the probability questions. Now, to understand that, let us take one question. A box contains 4 black balls, 3 red balls and 5 green balls. Two balls are drawn from the box at random. What is the probability that both the balls are of same color? Okay, for this, let us list out what are the different kind of balls available. We have 4 black, 
3 red and 5 green. So the total is 12 balls. And how many are we selecting? They said 2 balls are drawn. So from the 12, if I try to pick up 2 balls, the total outcomes from 12, we are choosing 2. This is 12 factorial by 2 factorial into 10 factorial. This when we solve, it turns out to be 66. The next we need to calculate favorable outcomes. That is, they are saying that the balls which you are selecting should be of same color. So if I take blue balls, both should be blue. If it is red, both should be red. If it is green, both should be green. So that we can calculate in this way. So from 4 blue balls, if I take 2, that is 4C2. Or from the 3 red, I can choose 2, that is 3C2. Or from the 5 green, I can choose 2, so 5C2. So this is 4 factorial by 2 factorial into 2 factorial plus 3 factorial by 2 factorial into 1 factorial plus 5 factorial by 2 factorial into 3 factorial. This when we solve it turns out to be 19. Now let's use the formula. Probability is favorable outcomes by total outcomes that is 19 upon 66. Therefore option C. Let's do one more question for practice. An urn contains, urn means like a box or a bag, 3 red and 4 green marbles. If 3 marbles are picked at random, what is the probability that 2 are green and 1 is red? Again, let me list out the marbles. We have 3 red and 4 green marbles. Therefore, total is 7 marbles. In that, we are only selecting 3 marbles. So, total outcomes that is from 7, we need to choose 3. This is 7 factorial by 3 factorial into 4 factorial. This is 35. Then comes the favorable outcomes. In that, they specifically mentioned 2 has to be green and 1 has to be red. So from green, I need to choose 2. So 4C2 into. Now, we do into because they are using the term and. Whenever and is there, we just multiply. Whenever or is there, we just add. So here it is multiplication. Then 1 from red. So red is 3. So 3C1. So you do this. This will be 6 into 3. That is 18. Now probability is favorable outcomes by total outcomes. This is 18 by 35. That is option B. So that was type 1 questions based on marbles and balls. Now let's get into type 2 that is problems based on rolling a die. For the die based questions, we need to have some basic concepts clear. So for this, let's assume we are throwing a die once or the throw is one, one throw. So when we do this, there are six possible outcomes. Either the number could be one or it could be two or three or four, five or 6. So I can say total outcomes are 6 and those 6 outcomes are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Now what if we throw the die 2 times, 2 throws, then the total outcomes will be, let me list out, it could be 1, 1 or 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, then 2, 1, 2, 2 and so on till 6, 5, and 6, 6. So, the total will be 6 into 6, that is 36 possible outcomes. Now, what if we throw 3 times? Then the total outcomes will be 6 into 6 into 6, that is 216 possibilities. Okay, this much understanding is enough. Now, let's do one question. A die is thrown twice. What is the probability of getting first number double the other? Now, let's write down the total outcomes. When we throw it twice, we already know it is 6 into 6, 36 possible outcomes. Now what about the favorable outcomes? They mentioned that the first number should be double the other. So if it is 1, 
the second number should be 2 or if it is 2 then it will be 4 if it is 3 it could be 6 then 4 it has to be 8 but this possibility is not there in die we have a maximum of 6 numbers so this is not there so only 3, three possible outcomes so what will be probability probability is favorable outcomes by total outcomes so this is 3 upon 36 that is 1 by 12 option b let's do one more for practice a die is thrown twice what is the probability of getting a sum 7 from both the throws again the total outcomes will remain same which is 6 into 6 36 what about favorable outcomes they're saying that the sum has to be 7 so if the number is 1 the second number will be 6 so that 6 plus 1 is 7 or it could be even 6 and 1 this also gives 7 then we can have 2 and 5 or 5 and 2 and 3 4 or 4 3 total 6 possible outcomes are there from this we can calculate the probability the probability is favorable outcomes by total outcomes this is 6 upon 36 that is 1 by 6 now let's move on to type 3 that is problems based on playing cards before you solve the questions you must know a couple of things regarding the playing cards the number of cards in a deck or a pack will be 52 and this 52 are classified into four categories one is spade the second is club then we have heart and a diamond each one is 13 cards so 13 spades 13 clubs 13 hearts and 13 diamonds and very important to note the spade and the club these both are of color black and the heart and the diamond are of color red and this 13 cards in each one is basically ace then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then a king, queen, and a jack. This is the classification of the playing cards. Okay, this much is enough to solve the problems. So let's quickly get into the questions. From a well shepherd pack of 52 playing cards, one card is drawn at random. What is the probability that the card drawn will be a black king? The first thing is we need to know the total outcomes. That is from 52 we are choosing 1 so 52 c1 will be the total outcomes which is 52 then coming to the favorable outcomes they're saying it's a black king we already know black is only two either it could be a spade or it could be a club so it could be a spade king or a club king therefore number of favorable outcomes is only two possibilities now from this we can write the probability as favorable outcomes by total outcomes that is 2 by 52 that is 1 by 26 i hope you are able to understand this now let me change the question slightly now instead of saying a black king if i remove the black now because we are not mentioning it to be black there are two more possibilities for the king it could be a heart king or a diamond king so this favorable outcomes will add up it will be 2 plus 2 it will be 4 this will change it will become 4 or this will become as 1 by 13 so based on what they are asking accordingly the outcomes will change and obviously the answer also will change accordingly all right that's it for the topic probability is very easy don't neglect the practice